My mother loaded my sisters and me into our Buick and drove us to our nation's capital for our summer vacation. While the other kids in the neighborhood got to go up north or to scout camp or to tot lot, we were forced to see the original documents of the founding fathers. The first flag sewn by Betsy Ross, the plane that Charles Lindbergh flew across the Atlantic. We took the FBI tour of the Department of Justice and we had our picture taken in front of the Iwo Jima statue and we knelt and prayed in Arlington at the grave of our fallen Catholic president. We traced from one end of Pennsylvania Avenue to the other, climbed all 896 steps of the Washington Monument, and paid a visit to our congressman to shake his hand and let him know that we'd be voters someday. And it was while I was there, inside the Capitol building, that I found myself separated from my mother and sisters and our cousin Patricia. We were on our way to sit in the Senate gallery as the senators were deliberating a bill that would provide free health care for all the old people in America. But I got distracted by the statues and the, of the senators, especially one Zachariah Chandler, the senator from Michigan in the 1800s. I was consumed with history and the story of the Republican Party and how it formed in Michigan and what a great party it was. The party of Lincoln, the party to end slavery, a party of conservatives Conservatives believed in conserving their money, believed in not spending money that they didn't have. Conserving our air, our water, God's gifts, our natural resources on this earth. Conservation. That's what conservative meant. Eventually it dawned on me that I was all alone and on my own. My mother and sisters were nowhere in sight. I began to panic. Where did they go? Why did they leave me here? I may have thought I was a smart kid, but I had no idea where I was, where they were, or how I, or how I would find them. At age 11, the Capitol Rotunda seemed like its own planet to me, or worse, a giant white marble vortex spinning madly and sucking everything into it. I tried to catch my breath and began walking quickly in whatever direction seemed like the way out. I somehow ended up on the Senate side of the building and went down a staircase, looking frantically for any sign of my family. Realizing I was getting nowhere, I bolted through a pair of elevator doors just as they were closing. Inside the elevator, I began to cry. There was a lone man in the back corner, leaning against the railing, his face covered by the newspaper that he was reading. 